New Yorican is a person of Puerto Rican descent, either living or born in New York City. And it's a distinction that I never asked for. Because you see, in Puerto Rico, we're not Boricua enough. And in the States, we're not American enough, even though our passports would tell us otherwise. See, they don't realize that Puerto Rico is in America now. You see, over here, what we're called is Spix, which is funny because it comes from Puerto Rican saying, I don't speak English, I speak, I speak, I speak. Now, life in Puerto Rico was fine. But Papi, like most Puerto Ricans, was a dreamer and thought that life would be better outside here in the States. So he took me at the age of 14, my brother Chino at the age of 13, and mommy and brought us to Los Nuyores. We left the house in Arecibo for a tenement in the Upper West Side. We left Café Yaucono for Bustelo, Choripan for White Castle Burgers, y la Playa de Luquillo for the slush of the city. And so this promised life that we were expecting was nothing but a hell of cold winters and even colder New Yorkers. Now, Papi, he got a job as a bus driver and he would work long hours at night. And mommy, she worked at Lucia's wedding shop as a seamstress. And when we got older, Chino and I had to help out in the house because in our culture, la familia es primero. Now, Chino, he was daddy's favorite child because Papi really believed that he can be something. You see, his real name is Pedro, but when he was a baby, he was so fat, he looked like a Buddha. And so we called him Chino. But he wanted to be a lawyer and go to Harvard, like his namesake, Don Pedro Albizu Campo. That was his dream. But it wasn't meant to be because right now we had to work and we had to work hard. But as hard as we worked, we played even harder. You see, los fines de semana, los weekendes, that's when we would get together. Y la música was the language that we loved the most. Papi would put on a bolero and he would slowly be asking mommy. Mm. But sometimes he would pull out his congos and he would hit them to release all the pain and frustration that he felt inside him. Now, Sundays, well, Sundays were to go to church and pray to La Virgen to give us bendiciones. But on los weekends, it was for arroz con pollo, tostones, cuba libre. And it was on one of those nights that my dear brother Chino met his cursed fate. You see, we ran out of soda, so he went down to La Bodega, pero La Bodega was closed. So he went over to enemy territory to Doc's candy store. See, where we lived, there were a lot of gangs and Papi didn't want us to get associated with those gangs. So we stayed away and we kept ourselves clean. But this particular night, two members of the gringo gang named the Jets, they took my brother and started beating him up. They took a bottle, broke it. And right when they were gonna cut his face, Bernardo stepped in. See, now Bernardo belonged to the Puerto Rican gang called the Jets. And at that moment, when he rescued Chino, they formed a bond like no other bond before. Chino looked up to him with awe and respect, and he invited him over to the house. When he came home, Papi was so angry, like, ¿Qué carajo tu vas con ese hombre? But then he realized Bernardo saved his life. Unfortunately, because of that altercation, our families were target. When I would walk down the street, they would do cat calls, lo jet seso. And one day they took Papi when he was coming home early in the morning and they roughed him up. His heart couldn't give it and he died. 
Chino was so fucking angry. He became dark. He was not the Chino that we know. Mommy was so upset. And then he started hanging out more and more with Bernardo. But one day, he came home and he was different. He had the smile on his face. You know why? Porque estaba enamorado. He was in love. You see, Bernardo's little sister, Maria, had just come in from Puerto Rico. And Bernardo didn't trust any of them sharks with her, but he did trust Chino. He knew Chino was going to go places, and he wanted Maria to be part of that. So he made sure they were always together. And Chino was going to take her to her first dance in America. He was so excited. We went over to Alexander's, and we got him a nice jacket and a tie. And he wore Papi's shirt. And it was sad that Papi wasn't here to see that. And it was a beautiful night. Chino was so happy. And he danced with Maria, a bolero, just like mom and papi used to do. And then he stepped away for a minute to go get her a Coke when he came back. It was this jet named Tony. Manganzón, he was this big, ugly guy. And he was hitting on Maria. When Bernardo saw that, he went nuts. And he got really mad at Chino for not watching her. But then he realized, you know what? They're doing that to retaliate. They're doing it to get under my skin. But we're going to fix this up tomorrow night. We're going to have a fight. So the next night, the two gangs decided to fight it out. At first, it was just a fist fight. But then it got nasty. They pulled out knives. Now, Chino shouldn't have been there, but he went anyway. And then... Tony stabbed Bernardo. Chino went nuts. He, he just couldn't take it anymore. And one of the sharks gave him a gun and he said, I'm going to kill Tony. And he went out looking for Tony that night. And while he was looking for him, somebody told Tony that Maria had been killed by Chino. Una cosa loca. And so Tony said, hey, Chino, find me, kill me, I'm here. And Chino went, blacky thing, and he shot him. The police came, I see, right away. They arrested my brother, and he was sentenced for life with no parole. Mommy was devastated. I wanted to go back to Puerto Rico, and she said, no, no, we're going to stay here. We're going to take care of Chino. We'll visit him every time we can, because in Puerto Rico, we always say, siempre pa'lante. Always go forward, never go backwards, not even to get momentum. Now you would think that she would have lost her faith, but mommy, mommy had the La Virgen in her room with a little candle every night. I couldn't stand it. I, I, I wanted to get out of El Barrio. So a few years later, I finally saved up and I moved to the Lower East Side, Alphabet City. There, an old inmate that was with my brother up in Rakers Island. He opened up a cafe called New York Rican Poets Cafe. His name was Miguel Pinero. And he wrote beautiful poetry. And he gave me a job. And there I met Ismael, a musician, beautiful guy. And we got married, we had a little boy. Mommy moved in with us and we realized we have a responsibility to raise a little boy in this city, raise him to be a proud American, a proud Puerto Rican, a proud New Yorkian. Because you know what? In our culture, la familia es primero. And to finish this off, I would love to read to you just a little piece of some of Miguel Pinero's work. It's called a Lower East Side Poem. Just once before I die, I want to climb up on a tenement sky, to dream my lungs out till I cry, then scatter my ashes through the Lower East Side. Bravo! Bravo! Oh, great. Bravo! 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 Bravo. Bravo. Bravo.